Thomas Matthew DeLong was born in Poway, California on December 13, 1975. The son of a mortgage broker mother and an oil company executive father, he has a brother named Sean and a sister named Carrie. His first musical instrument was a trumpet, which he received as a Christmas gift at age 11. He originally planned to become a firefighter and participated in the San Diego Cadet Program. He first picked up the guitar from a friend at church camp and became preoccupied by the instrument. He received his first guitar as a Christmas present from two friends in the sixth grade which he described as a beat-up, shitty acoustic guitar that was worth about $30. In the seventh grade DeLong visited a friend in Oregon who introduced him to the music of Stiff Little Fingers, The Descendants and Dinosaur. He consequently dyed his hair purple and began practicing the guitar loudly in his bedroom. He attempted to form a band named Big Oily Men which was essentially a one-man band because its lineup consisted of whomever he could persuade to join him for short periods. DeLong formed his first successful band Blink-182 in 1992. He was removed from Poway High School in the second half of his junior year for going to a basketball game while inebriated. He was forced to attend a different school for one semester nearby Rancho Bernardo High School, where he became friends with Kerry Key and his girlfriend Ann Hoppus. Rancho Bernardo organized Battle of the Band's competitions and DeLong signed up, performing an original song titled Who's Gonna Shave Your Back Tonight to a packed auditorium. Drummer Scott Rayner was at the competition with his own group which soon dissolved, after which he was introduced by friend Paul Scott to DeLong at a party. The two began to organize jam sessions at Rayner's home, shifting through various bassists. The following summer his desire to be in a legitimate band increased significantly. Anne Hoppus characterized DeLong's passion as incessant whining and complaining. Her brother Mark Hoppus was new to San Diego and she introduced the two one night that August. The two would jam for hours in DeLong's garage, exchanging lyrics and writing new songs. The trio began to practice together in Rayner's bedroom, spending hours together writing music, attending punk shows and movies and playing practical jokes. Hoppus and DeLong would alternate singing vocal parts. The trio first operated under a variety of names including Duct Tape and Figure 8, until DeLong rechristened the band Blink. Their first demo Flyswatter a combination of original songs and punk covers was recorded in Rayner's bedroom in May 1993. DeLong called clubs constantly in San Diego asking for a spot to play, as well as calling up local high schools convincing them that Blink was a motivational band with a strong anti-drug message in hopes to play at an assembly or lunch. With help from local record store manager Pat Secker, the group recorded Buddha in 1994, a demo cassette that increased the band's stature within San Diego. Cargo Records signed the band on a trial basis, Hoppus was the only member to sign the contract, as DeLong was at work at the time and Rayner was still a minor. The band recorded their debut album in three days at West Beach Recorders in Los Angeles, fueled by both new songs and re-recordings of songs from previous demos. In short MCA promised the group complete artistic freedom and eventually signed the band. But Rayner held a great affinity for Epitaph and began to feel half invested in the band when they passed over the label. Their second effort Dude Ranch hit stores the following summer and the band headed out on their first Warp tour. When lead single Damn It began rotation at Los Angeles-based K-Rock FM, other stations took notice and the single was added to rock radio playlists across the country. Dude Ranch shipped gold by 1998 but the exhaustive touring schedule brought tensions among the trio. Rayner had been drinking heavily to offset personal issues, and he was fired by DeLong and Hoppus in mid-1998 despite agreeing to attend rehab and quit drinking. Travis Barker drummer for Tormate the Aquabats filled in for Rayner, learning the 20-song setlist in 45 minutes before the first show. Barker joined the band full-time in summer 1998 and the band entered the studio with producer Jerry Finn later that year to begin work on their third album. Their multi-platinum success, 
arena tours and cameo appearances the band recorded Take Off Your Pants and Jacket in 2001, which debuted at number one in the United States, Canada and Germany. Hit singles The Rock Show, Stay Together for the Kids and First Date continued the band's mainstream success worldwide, with MTV cementing their image as video stars. With time off from touring, DeLong felt an itch to do something where he didn't feel locked into what Blink was, and channeled his chronic back pain and resulting frustration into Boxcar Racer in 2002, a post-hardcore album that further explores his fugazi and refused inspiration. Refraining from paying for a studio drummer, he invited Barker to record drums on the project and Hoppus felt betrayed. The event caused great division within the trio for some time and an unresolved tension at the forefront of the band's later hiatus. In the wake of Blink breakup, DeLong underwent a complete reassessment of his prime concerns a move bearing the hallmarks of a nervous breakdown and went on a three-week spiritual journey in complete isolation away from his family, contemplating his life, career and future in music. DeLong felt psychologically hurt by the band's dissolution, likening it to a divorce and calling it a traumatic experience and a disaster. He had been known for his role in the Blink as the low-brow prankster and wanted to restart his career without worrying whether fans would find him funny. DeLong's endorsement of John Kerry in the 2004 presidential election led to him traveling the political circuit with a Democratic Party candidate. DeLong was inspired by Kerry's need for widespread reform and likened his presidential campaign to a drug, remarking later that it really changed. He rediscovered the epiphany developed during his tour with Kerry and applied it to the philosophy of his new group Angels and Airwaves, while he redefined himself as he learned to play piano and self-produce and formed his own home studio. DeLong grew to prominence playing pop-punk music. Southern California had a large punk population in the early 1990s, aided by an avid surfing, skating and snowboarding scene. In contrast to East Coast punk music, the West Coast wave of groups, Blink included typically introduced more melodic aspects to their music. New York is gloomy, dark and cold it makes different music. The Californian middle-class suburbs have nothing to be that bummed about, said DeLong. In a 2011 article he outlined six musical acts that impacted his growth as a musician, among them Stiff Little Fingers, U2, Depeche Mode, New Order, Fugazi and The Descendants. The last was his main influence when he began playing guitar, early recordings such as Buddha were an attempt to emulate their sound. Following The Descendants, DeLong once cited Screeching Weasel as the second biggest influence on his songwriting in his early career. DeLong has shifted from punk rock in recent years, moving toward an effects-laden progressive-inspired sound. He has stated the first album he ever fell in love with was The Joshua Tree by U2 after which he delved into punk rock. He would later return to the album in his adult life, calling it his favorite album describing it as still relevant and soulful.